Before we start, it is worth noting that the clauses numbering in the ISO 27002 standard start with the number 5 and end up with the number 18, as the first four numbers are used for introductory purposes. The first clause of the ISO 27002 is called, Information Security Policies. It contains one category which is, Management Direction for Information Security, and two controls. The objective of this category is to provide management direction and support for information security in accordance with business requirements and relevant laws and regulations. Policies at a high level are a way for management and higher executives to provide general guidance for the organization. For an organization to have a proper direction of its information technology and information security posture and progress, a policy framework needs to be established, reviewed, approved, and implemented. This framework goes from a general information security policy to more technical policies discussing different aspects relating to information, infrastructure, organization, and personnel. The first control in this clause is, Policies for Information Security. It includes defining, approving, publishing and communicating a set of policies for information security to employees and relevant external parties. It states that an information security policy should be defined at the highest level of an organization, which should be approved by management. It should state how the organization will be managing its information security objectives. To define this high-level policy, a clear business strategy should be defined, the organization's legal and contractual requirements analyzed, and a view of the threat environment relating to information security estimated. This high-level policy is essential to any organization that takes information security seriously. It should include definitions of the information security as the organization sees it, as different organizations would have different definitions depending on their line of business or their size and threat environment. It should also define how the responsibilities for information security management are assigned to their corresponding roles, and a process that explains how to handle exceptions to be made to this policy. Along with the general information security policy, several lower-level technical policies should be defined as per the organization's status. Examples of these policies include, an access control policy, an information classification and handling policy, a physical security policy, an acceptable use policy, a backup policy, a privacy policy, and many others as needed by the organization. Communicating policies is as important as defining them, and employees and the intended audience should be educated and trained on how to understand and properly implement and abide by those policies. An awareness program should consider policy education and communication to the employees as a priority. It is worth noting that the number of policies and the complexity of the policy framework varies significantly depending on the organization. More complex organizations should have a more extended framework and larger number of policies. Small size organizations should define a set of policies as well, but care should be taken that the entity responsible for defining and approving the policy is not the same as the entity implementing it, to maintain a level of auditability and reporting. When distributed outside an organization, policies containing confidential information, for example in an information classification policy or a backup policy, should not be disclosed. A policy is not an exact standard document that is the same in all organizations, and policies under the same name could differ significantly from one organization to the other. Having said that, there are general guidelines and structures of how to develop certain policies, but no particular scheme is mandatory.